Hey, what's going on? Michael here. In this video, I have eight things that you didn't know your iPhone can do. So if you love your iPhone, smash that like button. Let's go ahead and jump in right now. So number one is inside the photos app. Now, if you choose a photo that has text in it and say you want to extract some text from a photo, all you have to do is press and hold and you can copy and paste text just like you do on any text input area of iOS. I'll show you here in this photo. So I'll zoom in on this uh, photo I took of my MacBook Air. And if I wanna choose this text Mac OS Big Sur, all I have to do is press and hold on it and select it. And there I can copy it just like that. Or I can even tap on it. I can even hit look up and you can get info uh, right from the web right here, uh, right from your photos library. So this is really cool and really powerful. And you'll find that it works really well too. So say for example, you took a photo and there is the name of a restaurant or a phone number in the background and it might even be blurred out a little, the iPhone can still pick up that text and it'll still let you copy it uh, directly from the photo. So this is uh, probably one of my favorite features that Apple introduced in iOS 15. This is called live text. Number two is inside the camera app. So if you are recording video, uh, the iPhone out of the box records 1080p video. And many people don't know that and they wanna record higher quality video and they hear that the iPhone has amazing video quality, but then they look at their videos and they're not that high quality. That's because out of the box, the iPhone shoots 1080p. And you can actually change your resolution by tapping on it at the top right. So you can see I'm in 4K 60. If I tap on 4K, you can see it turns there to HD. If I tap it again, it turns back to 4K. You can also do the same for the frame rate. So if I tap where it says 60, it goes to 24 and also 30 there. So it lets you cycle through all the available frame rates. It doesn't, however, let you cycle through all the available resolutions because the iPhone can actually record a more economy format, uh, 720p, but uh, in the camera app, it only lets you switch between HD 1080p and 4K. So just a, a really nice hidden feature there inside the camera app. So number three is a really cool one. So I might be the only person in this world that likes to fall asleep in a loud room. I just can't do it when there's complete silence. So I like to put on what's called white noise. And now white noise is actually built into the iPhone with iOS 15, so this is pretty cool. If you open settings and then click on accessibility, scroll down where it says audio visual, and then you can see right here, background sounds. You can choose to turn this on or off and there's a whole bunch of different options. I believe the default sound is rain or ocean. Uh, my favorite one is balanced noise. It just is kind of like a light static noise and it really helps me fall asleep. However, when you wanna shut this off, it can kind of be annoying. So once you turn on background sounds for the first time, there will be a new toggle available for you in control center. So open control center settings, and then there is a hearing toggle that is now visible to you. So you'll click that, add it to your control center, and then whenever you go into control center, you can tap this little ear icon, and then you can turn on your background sound right there. So I don't wanna play that static, but uh, one click, and you can turn on your background sounds right from control center. So this is a, uh, a really easy way to turn on your white noise. Uh, I use this every night when I try to fall asleep. So next up, I'm guessing you use Safari a lot. Everybody uses Safari. And uh, when you're browsing a website and you wanna open a new tab or switch tabs, you can tap the tab button at the bottom and then tap plus, and then you can open a new tab. But you can actually access all of your open tabs simply by swiping up where the address bar is. So it's a little bit strange. If you swipe up from the bottom, of course, that'll take you to your home screen. But if you swipe up from the website bar, you can actually see an overview of all your tabs. And then you can switch between your tabs just by swiping. But something I discovered when Apple released iOS 15 is you can actually quickly overview all of your tabs just by swiping up on the website bar. So next up, we're gonna talk about widgets. So widgets are fantastic and Apple introduced them with iOS 14 and it can really customize the look of your home screen. As you can see, I have my uh, fitness widget here, a calendar and also my files widget. And you can actually customize your widgets and Apple doesn't really make this clear. Not all of them are customizable, but most of them are. So we'll use the files one here, for example. If you press and hold on it, you can actually see edit. And now you can choose an exact uh, location that you want this widget to show. So if I wanna show only uh, files from a certain folder, I can customize my files widget. So if you wanna add more widgets, all you have to do is go into jiggle mode, click the plus icon on the top left, and here are all your widgets. And then just like I showed you, once it's on your home screen, all you have to do is press and hold on the widget. And if there's a button that says edit widget, there are more options for you. So I have this widget right here 
for weather line, if I press and hold and hit edit, you can see I can change a lot with this widget. So this is more uh, useful for third party applications, but I'd uh, poke around with all your widgets and see what settings you can change uh, as you can personalize them a little bit more. So next is a feature that has actually been in iOS for quite a long time, I believe since iOS 12, but I just never use it even though I probably should because it's very useful to create PDFs of websites. So let's go to apple.com here and if I take a screenshot by clicking volume up and power, uh, that is the normal screenshot gesture. If you click on it, you can see there's an option here that says screen or full page. Now this often goes ignored by most iPhone users. If you click on full page, you can see that this is the entire length of the Apple website and it allows you to save a PDF of the entire website that you were just on. So once I hit done, it doesn't give me the option to save it to photos as a JPEG. It only gives me the option to save it as a PDF. But if you just wanna take a screenshot, when you hit done, it does give you the option to save it to photos. So just the option to save an entire PDF of a whole website can be very powerful. So next is for those big iPhone users. So I would be one of those. This is the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And if you're using your device with one hand, sometimes typing can get a little bit cumbersome. Now for me, I have fairly large hands and my thumb can reach across uh, to the edge of my keyboard. But if you really don't wanna risk it and you don't want to uh, try to drop your phone on your hand when typing, I'd recommend pressing and holding the emoji key. And then there is a little icon here that lets you put your keyboard uh, to the right side or to the left side of your screen. And swiping still works in this mode also. So this is really useful. I don't use it as much as I should, but it really makes one-handed typing a lot easier on your larger iPhone. Next up, this next one goes hand in hand with making the keyboard smaller. It's all about being able to use your phone with one hand. So this next one is called reachability. So if you swipe down about half an inch from the bottom of your screen, it brings your screen shifted down and it gives you the option to open stuff uh, with just one hand. It also works with gestures. So if I go into reachability and I wanna go into notification center, all I have to do is one small swipe and then a swipe from the top of my screen. It lets me go into notification center. So not many people use this, even though it's been in iPhones for a very long time, ever since the iPhone uh, 6 Plus, I believe. So reachability is very powerful. And even though it does include an extra step, it is pretty useful for larger phones. So those were my eight tips, but if you stuck around to the end, I am gonna show you a few bonus ones here. Now, I didn't wanna put this in the video just cause this tip has been used so many times on different tips and tricks videos that you probably know it by now, but if you don't, if you're typing in the calculator and you wanna get rid of some digits that you typed in by accident, no need to clear the entire thing. All you have to do is back swipe and it'll actually remove the last digit that you entered. So very powerful in the calculator. And one more bonus one here, if you open up Safari and scroll down and click on edit, you can actually give a background image to Safari. So similar to what Chrome allows you to do. So turn that on and Apple has a whole bunch of nice images here. Let's choose this one, this one looks pretty nice. And then as soon as you open Safari, you'll get this nice background image. So it looks a little bit more classy inside Safari. So there we have it. I would venture a guess that now you are probably better at using your iPhone after watching this video. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a like on it. Also comment down below telling me what you thought. I've been trying to push out more content for you guys, so tell me what you think. My name is Michael. I'll see you in the next video.